Hey, good evening, folks, and welcome to the Let's Go Fishing Show. And tonight, my guest is Mr. Glenn Reynolds. Glenn, glad to have you on the glad show. Glad to be here. Hope everybody enjoys the show. I do, too. Uh, Glenn was on a few months ago. Uh, uh, no, let's see, November the 14th, as a matter of fact, and we had a lot of uh, response, and, and he and I got together, and, and uh, uh, the bottom line was we didn't get to talk about what all we wanted no, to, Glenn. Huh? didn't get through, did we? Did we? We didn't get through. So I went down and told Glenn, I said, hey, uh, uh, you pick the date or whatever, and I said, let's get you back on here. And uh, so we decided tonight would be the best night for it, and and uh, Glenn's got some lower units and some injectors. I mean, he's got, Glenn, just tell, tell us what all you did bring. Well, I bought, uh, we can, we gonna start? Yes, let's just get started. Well, I guess let's start with injectors, I guess. All right. Uh, very important part of the new, of the new series of engines we've got. Right. Uh, got a few test results that we've done. I don't know where we get a close up shot or not. Uh, but it shows the uh, how we can do that. Let's be on that camera right there. Yeah, okay. Brad's got you on there. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it shows it shows a uh, hundred percent increase between when we first tested them after mm -hmm. we'd cleaned them. Mm -hmm. Now we ultrasonic heated and they're live hard while we're cleaning. Uh huh. So it went from fifty uh, cc's. To 100 cc, so it's a 100 percent increase, uh -huh. and they're all pretty well balanced. Uh, let me ask you something, Glenn, okay. on these injectors. Mm -hmm. This uh, ethanol gasoline. Now, what has effect has it on these injectors? Well, it has effect on all all uh, all uh, gasoline uh, fuel hoses, mm -hmm. primer bulbs, injectors. Really, really, for a guy that leaves his boat set for any length of time. Yes, sir. Very, very important, and it's a uh, that's the heart of the heart of the engine right there. Yeah. And if it don't fire correctly, it's not going to run correctly. All right. And uh, it can burn up an engine when it don't fire enough, or if it's a spewing fuel, it can it can uh, flood the engine. You see. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we do. We're the only dealer I know of in the area that that can actually test flow the injectors. You see. Uh, all right, folks. You you and you know these all these late model engines. Uh, has got these injectors in them, Glenn. Carburetors are they almost a thing of the past. past. There you go. So, uh, uh, you uh, fishermen, uh, boaters, that's got these uh, uh, late model engines. It's fuel injected. You 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 know you need to heed to this right here because that thing gets plugged off or whatever. You can lose an engine. You can go to my website, ReynoldsRacingMarine.com. Yes, pull sir. up the injector section. It'll, it'll show these. These are actually the customer and what there was when they come in and yeah. what there was when they left. And, oh, and it really opened the eyes up. So. Okay. That's, that sounds good. Uh, that's uh, I guess those things get plugged off and they kind of act like an old carburetor when it's half getting fuel that's or right. half mm -hmm. stopped up. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the injectors do the same thing. Do the same thing. It's a modern, modern way of doing it. Uh, all right. Now, well, Automax now has 12. 12 injectors. Yes. I wish you hadn't told me that, Glenn. Twelve, six fuel and six directs. <laughs> okay. And, All right. And if they're not running correctly, they don't run too good. It don't run too good. Okay. Bass boat guys don't have much trouble because they use them almost, okay. almost yeah. monthly. You see. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, they, now the, the the warm weather fisherman's gonna get in trouble next spring when he starts to crank up. You see. Okay. So if you're storing your boat, that that creates store, a problem. It creates a problem. Now we have we have additives. We have. Uh, Seafoam Merker makes some good additives that uh, keeps that from happening or helps, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you put ethanol fuel, any, if, any fuel as far as that goes, right. it'll gel up and stop up the injectors and, the, and harden up the bugs and Burn eat the inside of the lines out, on and on and on. Okay. I, that's, that's a good tip, folks. And, and Glenn, you want them to give you a call. And, uh, would, would it be wise to call you before they get their boat out of storage and it's a good idea before they good. before they run it too much and maybe burn up the the piston out of it. Okay, now, you know that's and that, that costs more than twenty five dollars an injector. Yes, sir. I guarantee you these. Uh, uh, man, I don't even want to mention the price because I don't even want to think about mine messing up. Uh, that's why I try to use mine year round. 
That's a good <laughs> idea. Huh? All right. What else good to Well, you? I guess we could start with uh, maybe our lower units here. As we got the camera on them there. Uh, we need, he yeah, he has. Right okay. Him. Yeah. We've got, uh, I had some more, but it's all we get in here at the last minute. Yep. Uh, I guess this is a stock gear case that we've known for years. Yes, sir. Had the sidewater pickup. Uh, we call this a aspect ratio, a ratio between the diameter and the length, you see. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. longer it is, the more time it has the water, has a chance for the water to flow back on the prop. If it don't, it'll hit it here and sort of bounce off, off. And you've heard a blowout, right? Yes, sir. Maybe experienced it at one time. Yeah, I have a few times, yeah. It, uh, what happens when, the, when it don't adhere to the gear case. Mm-hmm. And it uh, it starts missing the starts missing the prop, then it then it then it turns loose and around sometimes you rounds you go yeah. yeah I've done that three times Glenn and that yeah. was enough that, that was enough <laughs> that right. was enough yeah and now this uh, we normally run this gear case uh, you want me to hold that thing no up? I got it out of control okay we normally run it about so it low in the water yes sir. Where they'll, they'll get uh, water up to the sidewater pickups. Mm -hmm. Now we had another gear case called a Torque Master. It has holes in the front. We didn't get it in because we're running right. late tonight. Uh, and that's sort of you can run up in this area. Mm -hmm. Now the the this is just called a, a Sport Master. Yes, sir. Now it had holes below below the deal. Yeah. And this is normally this is normally about a 65 mile an hour gear case. You see. Mm -hmm. Then the 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 the, the torque master is normally a, a, I mean a, a torque master is normally an eighty to eighty four mile an hour boat right uh, speed for most boats you see mm -hmm. now if you got a lightweight really fuel efficient like a bullet or an Allison with a, maybe a three hundred on it then you have to go to what they call the sport master right and it is in the in the water normally you said it comes in about right here uh -huh. just so it goes into the in the holes, and you just all you got in the water is your is your skeg. You see, right now that's takes the right setup to make that work correctly. I understand. Now we talked, I think, before about customers putting nose cones, right, maybe on their boat and slowing down. Yes, sir. Uh, that has happened. That's happened. Yes, sir. And then what happens? You see how much more area this has mm -hmm. than the stock gear case. Right. Much more surface area. So. Uh, so they, uh, uh, if you don't need it, then you don't need, need it. it you right, see? I got you. And it, it, it lifts, so this has got a bigger belly on it, so it lifts the back end more. Mm -hmm. But if you've got, uh, I just set up a, a 21 bullet for the customer, and it run 91 to 8 with both of us in there. Mm -hmm. And handle it's like a drink. Right. But you've got to get everything right. And then when it does, it becomes a very efficient, high-speed, good driving machine, you see. Right. Uh, so we have... They have a Torque Master and a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. Uh -huh. uh, didn't get it in here tonight, but that's, uh, but this is, a, this like I say, this, and here it's called a blowout ring. See, it's got a, it's got a little ring, ring on, on it. Yes, sir. And I was uh, the one that worked on that back in the early 90s for Mercury. You see. In fact, this mm -hmm. whole gear case, you know, was the one that we worked on. Don't, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that, you know, they're nice. I'll uh, tell you a quick story. I was setting up a uh, Model VP boat one time, and it would run it run 97 and blow out. Mm -hmm. I come in, machine me a blowout ring like this, put it on there, went right back out, and it went 105 and done it again. But it picked up eight miles an hour by putting that, that little, little, ring little diffuser there. ring that holds yeah. that holds the 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 exhaust from getting get coming out and running out the side of the gear case and get in and get in the in in the, get air in here instead of water use. So that so the parabolic curve, right, with the blowout ring, makes it for a good running gear case. No kid, uh, that's uh, you know, and and there again, you 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 broke it down in the sixty mile an hour range and up to the eighty mile an hour range, and then anything above. This is above, 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 above about ninety, 90 yeah, 80, 80, 88 to ninety, about eighty seven. The new Gen two, I call it a duck bill. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 uh, we didn't get it in here, but it, it's. It's good for up in the uh, up in the mid to upper 80s on most good right. lifting boats. You know. Yeah. Now the strut, I don't know if we can see it or not. This has a bigger exhaust strut. Uh, 
down yeah. the back wider. Okay. See how, and if you look, uh, yeah. You see how how I narrow that, that is, is yes, and that sir. helps the bri the horsepower. Uh huh. That's help the horsepower of the engine. You see. Right. Let's turn these things around okay. so okay. folks can see what what you're talking about for sure, and uh, get them up here where they can look at them. We're we're kind of looking at the up. Oh, I got out of the focus there. Okay. There you go. Now then, okay, we're this, real narrow. This yeah. is uh uh. See, this has got a narrow strut. Mm-hmm. If you mm -hmm. want to hold that. Too. All right, I got it. I got the bullet head. Got the bullet head on, too. Yeah. All and right. this has got called a wide strut. Yes, And this sir. is where the exhaust comes down out of the engine and goes out the prop, you see. Uh-huh. And so it's much bigger capacity. It, 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 yes, sir. I, it, it helps the breathing. And it has, yeah. sometimes it blows more exhaust, so you got to sort of tune your your prop, prop. with, a, with the plugs like we talked about last time. With, yes, sir. Yeah. So some, it's, it's all a science that you have to work on. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All righty. Uh, yeah, Brad's got in here and got us a, a good picture of that. And I hope everybody sees what we were talking about. They done that. Uh, they they widened that out, that port exhaust in that lower unit to help that engine. Yes, and a new Gen 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's got, I said, one of the difference between a, a Gen 1, one. port master and a Gen 2 is is a wide strip. Yeah. And it's got a little bar, little better parabolic curve. It's okay. not not as it's sort of in between these three or four of them. It's sort of, it's close to this one, but it's it's still yeah. a got a little side one. I should have I didn't get one in here, but it's on my website. Yeah. Okay. All right. Remember uh, that, folks. Get to the uh, Glenn's website and, and and follow up on what we're talking about for sure. Now, normally when you start jacking. These engines up. Yes, sir. You have to do what to call a fat shaft. It's a heavy duty, mm -hmm. heavy duty shaft right. with a big bearing carrier. Right. Yeah. The mistake's been made many times. I take a stock gear case, put a nose cone on it. Mm -hmm. They jack it up, and the narrow carrier beats out the the, the, seal. the seals and all. It, yeah. So you know it's a good idea to get, always get the heavy duty components. Mm -hmm. If you're going to try to run on a high performance setup, you know. All right, that that makes sense. So it's sort of a science, you know. What I'm uh, saying. Hey, and, well, it's it's your knowledge. That's the big thing. So and uh, uh, so that's just some of the stuff we have. Uh, we can uh, we can go. We've got any questions, or if we want to go into the boat? But, yeah, let's let's uh, uh, you know if you're through explaining that, well, and, and I know there's a lot more on it you could tell us about. So we're gonna take a break and answer. Uh, but that's uh, fine and dandy. Now you want to uh, talk about the boats and and. Well, let's uh, let's talk about boats. Let's talk about boat construction. Okay. All right. Let's see. Well, let's pick those up. Yeah, set them, set them over there and we'll. Uh, okay. We'll, All uh, right. We'll get loaded up here. Yeah. We've got our lower. We got our engine running right now. Now we need it on the right boat. Get it on the right boat. That's there, true. There we go. We have four brands of boats. We have the Express with several different hull configurations. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, Phoenix. Right. And then we have the Bullet and the Allison, and that pretty well covers a broad spectrum of, of product there. Yes. I guess we can start with the. Uh, with Express, that's okay. a new, new, got some new 14 uh, uh, product in now. Uh, Express is the only one I know of that builds all aluminum, all welded boat and trailer. Some of my competitors, they say all welded, okay. but when you get to looking, they got plywood in inside. Mm -hmm. Some of them are prop rivets, some of them are glued together, and a lot of, most of them have a steel C-frame trailer. Okay. Uh, now this is a cutaway of a, an express boat uh, where they weld it inside. Mm -hmm. They foam it in and then they weld it, well, they, they, and they weld and grind that and make it like a sandwich construction. Yeah, I see and that. And it's hard and strong. I see and that. And quiet. Yep. So that's, that's, a, that's a good product. Okay, we've got uh, a good close up of that cutaway now, yes, folks. Sir. Yeah, and, and uh, let's, turn it, let's turn it here turn, like yeah, this. Yeah, there you go. And show how they, they weld it inside and they weld it uh, they weld it on the on the on the top oh, there and then grind it down. Use that's just a, mm -hmm. just a sample. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the best way to build a uh, lunar boat, boat is yeah. to is to make it an integral, all welded, all connected product. You see. Right. And they uh, and we've got a lot of concept boats. We call them hunting fish boats. boats. Yeah. 
Uh, and they're all constructed the same. All way? every one of them constructed the same, same way. way. They, they don't they don't vary from the construction. Gotcha. It's all, uh, and they've got all braces and their ribs run a long ways. Now a lot of the John boats and we've got a few like it run crossways, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that didn't give much strength in a in a, in a lateral right situation. You know, didn't it? Yeah. So yeah. So that's they've really improved the, the strength and then they run I beams up the side. They're big. They're about. Uh, that wide and so high, run up the side, welded front and back, uh, to really make it still stronger. You see. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you've been running some pretty uh, large engines on those. We express run. We, we were got a two fifty down there. Got a two fifty. Uh, back, uh, back sixteen inches. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, no other company can run. Don't don't sell a boat with that kind of engine, engine. On it because yeah. if it did, it would. The transom would fall out of it. <laughs> so, uh, mm. so, but we build anything. We start with a 25 horsepower and go up right. to 250 horsepower. Right. And uh, at one time, I put a 280 short on one and run 95 GPS. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was just my little play toy. You know? Right. But, but they actually sell the 21 foot and 22 foot boats with 250s. The, the show, the big heavy yeah. four strokes. You know? And they run good. You know, we're running. We got one now running uh, uh, on the plus side of 80. You know, we don't know where it's going to wind up, but that's where we're at right now. You see. Gee, uh, that's uh, a long, That's a big step from when when I remember them boats years ago, Glenn. Sure well, is. we still have uh, duck boats, 16 footers. We have 15 footers. We have all the, the spectrum of all the product from the right. from, from the uh, uh, from the small one up to the big one. Big. You know, and I. Come down by and I give you a new 2014 brochure. Okay, all it right. Explains a lot. Uh, got a lot of product either coming or going or sold, and and uh, we're rigging a H22 camo boat now. It's going to be a combination uh, striper boat, hunting boat. Oh. Uh, all Mr. right. Cam here experimenting, buying it, and uh, we get we're working on it right now, putting a 150 on it. You know. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, a, yeah, that's, that's you know they came a long way in this aluminum. Uh, come around a long way from, yes, sure from the uh, the old uh, they call them B bottoms and mm -hmm. the little roll sides. That's that a, yes, sir. You better not step. step <laughs> stay in the middle. <laughs> you, better, you better stay in the middle. You <laughs> see. So that's uh, yeah. now we're we're approaching eight foot wide. Yeah. We we'll call them wide bodies. Right. We got several of those down there. Call them wide bodies, and they're ninety five inch beam, and they're begin to and you can get on the corner of them and never bother you. Yeah. See. So we've got a lot going on, and now's the time to get it. Spring will be here, even though it don't feel like it today. Right. Spring will be here before we know what you say. I agree. Uh, uh, yeah, so you guys, you know, duck hunters or whatever, uh, crappie fishermen, you know, go down and check these out. I'm really, uh, the, the crappie I think would be a good, uh, maybe like to have some, some kind of a special tournament maybe sometime, crappie tournament. Sounds like a good deal to me. Fish fryer or something. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> we catch them and eat them right there. Right That's, on it. Right right on on the I've lake. done that for years. Yes, you know. sir. Uh, uh, sure is. Well, Glenn, I know you got several other models of boats. What's uh, what? What's your next uh, in the fiberglass line there? Well, right? we've got uh, a Phoenix. I guess would be a good good, good. starting point. It's, a, right. it's a fine boat. It's uh, and it's built. Uh, they say better materials. I don't know if we can see it there or not. Yeah, he, he'll, uh, Brad will get on that. Be better uh, materials there in a second. and better craftsmanship build, build better boats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you something, and this is true of all, almost all my brands. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a, this is a. Uh, you want to show that brochure yeah, again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a sandwich construction on a aluminum boat now. Right. Now, this is a sandwich construction on a, on a fiberglass boat. boat. And here's the bottom, and here's the the, and it's Inside. got a core, mm -hmm. and acts like that acts like a, a Z and I beams across there, and you can make this boat like this, stronger, lighter, better. faster, better fuel economy. Mm -hmm. Now there's only a few brands that use this, you know, most of them don't, but this uh, this happens to be a cutaway of an Allison bottom, mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course Bullet uses a core. Uh, Phoenix uses some core materials. Terrible. Yeah. They, uh, uh, I guess I don't know. We can. Oh yeah. Maybe, maybe see the, the the green material here is is, is a core material. You see. Mm-hmm. So that's called Divini Cell. Right. And of course it don't rot and it soaks up resin and makes it very strong. You see. Mm-hmm. In other words, uh, it's the I beam theory. You know, you take right. a piece of piece of sheet metal and you can bend it, 
Mm -hmm. You put an I beam in between it and weld it on each side, it's strong pressure. Right, exactly. You, you right. do a lot of construction, I guess. Yeah. So that's the I beam theory. You see. Yeah. So we got a lot of stuff down there, a lot of neat stuff, that's and uh, and uh, yeah, things sort of changing. It's uh, um, we have the have bullet boats and we have Allison boats and. Uh, so we got a good broad right spectrum right now. Right, right. Yeah, I've told the, the viewers uh, uh, we've got uh, you've got five, uh, six brands of boats down there, counting the pontoon boat. And, yes. And uh, uh, you know, it, hey, you got to be you know somewhere along the line you got to be satisfied. You know, uh, I mean, six different brands of boats and uh, uh, all that kind of when all the different models they've all got and everything and. Uh, uh, it, it, you ought to be able to find one that you're looking for. A lot of consumers are doing a lot of research now, mm -hmm. and we invite their comparison of all my pro, of my comp competitors' brands. We like to bring them down and sit down and lay it out, and let's go over what the, what you're looking for. You see. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good that's a good deal. good thing. That, that's fine. Brad, uh, how about taking us to the the commercial break with Tim's tire there? Hey folks, as you can see, I'm here at Tim's Tire, and uh, I just gave you a little quick uh, rundown and you know, show you what kind of tires Tim's got. Listen, come by down here at Tim's Tire. That man, they've got a building full of tires here, and, and he's stocked up for bad weather and this kind of thing. So, uh, uh, like I said, if you need some tires, uh, you know, get down here and visit with Tim. Guarantee you, you won't leave here without your tires and you'll be satisfied and also to uh, I'm gonna go out here and show you the helmet cap okay folks uh, out here in the front lobby at Tim's tire and and uh, he still got a, several of these helmets here on the shelf and a matter of fact he's got a sign there it says 50% off so uh, you guys that uh, know what these helmets cost uh, that's a pretty good saving so, uh, uh, and, and they are beautiful, some of them. I tell you what, they're nice. I hope the camera's doing them justice. Uh, but get down here and visit with Tim on your tires and, and uh, check these helmets out. And uh, uh, see you Thursday night. Hey, folks. I've got Kurt. All right, folks, we're back. Uh, Glenn is going to let me uh, tell you a few things i got to talk about. And then we're going to go back to Glenn because we got a lot more stuff to uh, talk about. And uh, uh, right quick, uh, let me mention the rest of our sponsors. We've got Bunch Marine down there uh, and uh, the sign shop in Harriman, uh, Edgemore Outdoors. Uh, and you know what, uh, Jim, I forgot to call you today to find out if we still had the sale rack going on. So if you're listening, when we turn the phones on, give us a buzz over here. And uh, Citizens First Bank, five locations, Watberg, Oliver Springs, Oneida, Harriman, and Oak Ridge. So uh, folks, you know, they're, they're handy, convenient, and uh, uh, good, friendly people. And... Uh, all they ask is you just, you know, if you any of your banking needs, come by and see them, give them a chance to get your business and that kind of thing. Uh, Knox Area Rescue Ministries, uh, Sue Winfro, uh, and that group of people over there, uh, 
you know, anything you can do to help those folks would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Mountain Pizza, uh, they got a Super Bowl special going to take place here uh, at Mountain Pizza. Uh, let's see, uh, and you know what? I don't even know. I know the Super Bowl's win two weeks away. Or, I it is. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, they've got uh, a special going on. Uh, prices, good Sunday, February the 2nd, uh, 2014 only. Hours 2 p.m. until the game, uh, until after the game. And enjoy the game on a seven. They're bringing in a 70 inch big screen TV down there in the dining area. And uh, you can go in and watch the ball game and enjoy the pizza uh, uh, or the other foods they've got available there. Uh, so, uh, and then on the carry out, uh, they've got any large one topping pizza, $6.99, any large uh, two topping pizza, $9.99. And the Super Bowl packages, you can dine in, carry out, or they'll deliver. Uh, gonna have wings and, and uh, with uh, breadsticks and two liter drink uh, shoot uh, and a one and a large order of pizza and, and, and one extra large any topping pizza and the ten wings and the breadsticks are all for $24.99 so uh, uh, go by and, and, and give them a call and they, you can see more about what they're gonna have to offer uh, there at uh, Mountain Pizza and uh, cash in on this uh, Super Bowl special. So uh, uh, there, there's just all kinds of stuff here to eat and drink. If you know, uh, for big groups, small groups, uh, uh, you know, they've got a one extra large uh, toppings and two extra large, four extra large, and six extra large topping pizzas. If it, you you know, if you're trying to feed the family, they, good deal. They, they they've got a bunch of everything here. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, go by and, and, and get your orders set up and, 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 you know, cash in on this special deal there at Mountain Pizza. Uh, they've got a flyer out here, and I'm sure if you're interested in that, you can call and get what I've left off, and I don't think I have, but give those folks a call, and they can fill you in on what they do have to offer and what the plan is for the uh, Super Bowl Sunday. So uh, appreciate them. C&D Printing up there. Remember Charlie Lane there. Uh, done some uh, work for me and, and uh, greatly appreciate it and I just told Charlie I'd mention his place on the show and and uh, so if you've got any printing needs it'd be a good place to start right there folks um, I've got a uh, little fishing we're going to show here in a little bit maybe uh, but my, you know my show tonight's de dedicated to Glenn he's one of the sponsors of the show and and we just felt like we left out a, there's a lot of time got by us in the last show that we didn't get to cover. And he and I were just talking while we was doing that break that we forgot those plugs for those props. And it does change a lot of things. And, and uh, but, you know, he's, he's as close as a phone call and as close as, a, as Harriman is to you wherever you're at. And he's got a website. So, uh. Sure we got everything covered. Uh, we got everything covered. So uh, you know, if you need his expertise, mm -hmm. and and uh, I've been in there in this place several times, and people calling from everywhere, all over the country, and and you know asking him questions about things, and and he's always there to answer. So uh, uh, he'd like to have your business. So if you get a chance to, you know, something you need to know, give Glenn a call. He'd be more than glad to talk to you. I'm sure. It's nice that uh, with the world problems. We, you know, we're bringing up the Super Bowl, you know, the pizza. <laughs> we're, 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 we're talking about the fishing and hunting boats. And, and you know, little, little NASCAR maybe coming down the pike. Yep. So the, if we all concentrated on the fun stuff, maybe the world would be better shape. I, I, I agree with that 100%. Now, right. now, I did make some boats. I call them concept boats. Mm -hmm. They're on my website. One of them is a, uh, a couple of them are fishing hunting boats. Uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, 18 and, and 20 foot long. Mm -hmm. They're made to hunt out, duck hunt out of, and fish out of. Uh, right. So I've got them in 17, 18, and 20 foot. Gee whiz. And then I've got a, uh, a uh, I call it a, 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 a fish and play boat. Mm -hmm. It is a 20, 18 foot boat. I have two of them, one with a 90, one with a 150. 
mm -hmm. the customer maybe can go fishing and it's big enough floor space to maybe take his family and put a tube right, in it and all that. So, oh, okay. So it's, it's, a, it's on my website, it's called a, 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 a fish and play boat. You got all two right. of them. They're wide bodies, be good, they be good for a young, you know, any, any couple that could go out right. and they could, they could use it on a Sunday afternoon to pull the kids on tubes and then go with us through the weekday uh, fishing. Fishing, oh yeah. So got a lot, like got a lot going on. You see. That sounds like a good deal uh, right there, Glenn. And that's what you need, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, you can, these things are so expensive anymore. You can't afford to let them set for just one use, you know. You need to have a multiple, multiple purpose product. I agree with that. But like I say, it's spring will be here before we know it. Yes, sir. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, probably 60 days away. Usually up in March it gets some some warm days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it come very oh, quick. It, yeah, it's going to be here before you know it. I mean, mm -hmm. I know we got cold weather right now, but I guarantee you uh, the fishing, and the crappie fishing, if, if you could brave the weather right now, you would catch them. You know, crappie are out there. Yeah, the crappies but, are out there, and, and, and uh, uh, the muskies and and uh, you know uh, just any kind of fishing you want to do it's all about whether you can get comfortable enough and stay warm enough to, to do it not met too many people out there not no this, not, not you know you can pretty much have the water yourself if you want it but, uh brad would you turn the phones on for us and and, and uh, we'll get some phone calls coming in and and uh, uh maybe you know somebody got some good questions for glenn uh, why he's here to answer them be great be great so uh other than that, we'll keep talking about the fishing and and uh, uh, some more announcements I got to make till we get get a phone call here and and see. So you folks that's listening, if you got any technical questions you want to ask Glenn, let him feel more free. Call in. And let's get him on the spot here. So, uh, but uh, you know these boats, you know if you can find one that's a multi-purpose, you, you you've done a whole lot. We're doing that right now. Yeah, I'm working on a. Uh catfish crappie trawler I, I ordered today I uh, should be here in about six weeks oh man uh, you know it's a, I that's a done any trolling for crappie in a long time, time right that's a uh, <laughs> that right there is a game changer I can tell you that right now uh, I had the uh, catfish guys that you know I told you several months ago they the, the you know they're getting into this tournament thing Yes, they are. And, and, yeah, uh, yeah, that's getting a big. It's getting to be a uh, big some places, thing. it's big. Uh, it's big business. Yes, say. sir. And uh, you know, uh, these guys got their. Uh, uh, my brother Mike said that's the only way he ever been to where they had to have a wheel bar to get the fish to the scale. <laughs> I said, well, you know, and so that you had was to have true. A wheel bar to, yeah. Wheel bar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or maybe if we had a combination. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, catfish and crawfish, maybe it balances itself out. Maybe it bounces out. I agree with that. We well, sure do, uh, without a doubt. Uh, but that's a, that. You know, that's a great, great thing to do is be able to fish on Friday and tube on Sunday afternoon. Yes. You know, that, that's a, Mama would be more yes, willing sir. to yeah. make you help with the payment. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, but we have pontoons too. That's uh, Fish and, and, and pleasure. Yes, sir. But uh, but these these my concept boats would be good for for a guy that wanted to have a combination boat and be able to enjoy the whole family. You see. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can get a, a there is a picture of the catfish boat. Uh huh. I don't know if we can I'd probably have to Brad, get a close up. I don't up. know if Brad's got the close up. Okay. Bit. But anyway, it's got uh, two, they 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 troll out the back like like a like okay. They troll out the back, back like yeah. A, like a uh, like a like a saltwater job. Job, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So we want to try to work on that That's a bit. bit. Yeah, called a back trolling. Okay. And it's, All right. Uh, as soon as it should be here by crappie season. I, I, I see he's got his uh, his rod holders and stuff yes. all across the back. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. that works good. Right? Pretty, pretty good. Looks good. All right. right, I think we got a phone call here. Okay. Let's see what we got. Hello, caller. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I was going to ask Glenn what he thinks about these octane boosters. 
Okay, octane boosters. Well, uh, it's uh, it's it's a good thing. It won't hurt anything. Uh, sometimes we get fuel that's ethanol based. It sets and it'll separate. So at one time you get a, a high charge of of ethanol, and then you get some that's really low octane. So an octane booster is a good uh, is a good uh, safety measure. I hope that answered your question, caller. Can you hear me? Hello, yeah, caller. Is, should it help on these injectors? Uh, we have a uh, called Quick Clean that helps on injectors. Yes, it does. Another trick that we're doing, and Mercury recommends also, is put just a, it's a small amount of two-cycle lubricant in the gas, even though you got oil injection. To give that injector a little bit of lubricant, you see, mm -hmm. uh, maybe just a, uh, maybe the 100, 150 to one mixture, yeah, just okay. a little bit in, in the tank that that will keep the, because uh, uh, that that injector, where did it go through there? The injector is a, is just a, just a mechanism that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. electric charged, and it moves in and out. You see, okay. every time every time it fires that pinhole, it goes in and out. So when it gets galled up, it'll stick. You see, so the lubricant. In, in the fuel is a, is a very good idea. You see. Okay. Along along with a quick clean, to to keep the uh, injectors clean. Yes. Sir. Mm. All right, caller. I hope you caught that little tip about adding that uh, lubricant to your gas tank, even though with oil injection. Uh, so uh, I hope we answered your question. You got anything else? Yeah, you answered it just fine. Thanks. All Thank right. You. Appreciate. It. Thanks for calling in. Well, that's a good question. Yeah, good, very good question. Well, very good question. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, Mercury recommends that. They don't advertise it, but they, but they, well, they, they sort of, the tourist man says that you got to have something that, uh, that, that you took the lead out of the fuels, you know, over right. the years for that was uh, a environmental active, active, uh, yeah. concerns because uh, it would act as a lubricant. Mm -hmm. And now we've got ethanol getting up 10% uh, or trying to go to 15%. Yeah. And it, it dries out this uh, this mechanism here, and they do what they call stick sometimes. Stick open or stick closed, you see. Mm. Or they don't operate in the proper range, you see. Well, now, Glenn, I ain't been adding any oil to my gas, but you've got me convinced that I, I, I will when I... Well, Mercury recommends it. Okay. They, they don't like to advertise it because it... Uh, but they do They do recommend it, you see. All right. Let's, let's hope we got another caller here. Hello, caller. Hey, Steve. Hey, buddy. Got a good man sitting there beside of you. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Willie. Sure have. Got a dandy. <laughs> he's a he's a heck he's a smart man, let me put it that way. Oh yeah, Glenn's a Glenn's a good one. All right, buddy. What can we help you with, Willie? Hey, uh does these motors run good on that ethanol? Well, I, I'm gonna before Glenn before I let Glenn get uh, the correct answer, I'm going to tell you my answer. I've been running it in my engine, the one I've got now, for almost five years. I haven't had a bit of trouble out of it. Well, automobiles run it every day. Every day. Uh, you like go. I say, the only problem is that uh, now a bass boat guy is not too bad. He, he goes down, he goes fishing, mm -hmm. he, he rides down the road, and he sloshes and mixes it all up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, a pontoon guy that leaves, or a bass boat leaves his boat in a slip. And sets it down and starts to crank it up and run it without without uh, stirring it up. He gets in trouble. You see. Mm -hmm. But a bass boat guy, uh, we've run. We've got guys that don't, don't run ethanol. Yeah. And uh, and some won't have nothing but 100 percent. You know. Right. Okay. You get a little more performance out of the uh, out of the non-ethanol product. You see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Willie. I hope you got that. Well, you know, mine mine got to where it wouldn't run. And uh, uh, when I took the filter off, it was full of water. Well, ethanol, ethanol, like alcohol, it, it draws water. I mean, that's, uh, and it's sort of, uh, but water will just get in a boat because it's a very harsh environment, you see. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, uh, you, you set and condensation forms in your tank. You're out in the water. You're backing in. You're raining. You're fishing in the rain sometimes. So it's, uh, water has a, has a way to get in the fuel, you see. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Uh, it, it cost me a lot of money. <laughs> well, we have water separators on most all the late model engines that has a sensor that tells you yeah. when it's water. Yeah, that's, uh, I took the filter off of the uh, uh, separator. And it's full of water? And had a lot of water and uh, pieces of hoses for, for that ethanol to eat the hoses up and everything. But after I put that new filter on there, it run great. Well, we recommend about every two two years is to change the hoses and the bulbs and flush out your tank. We've had them eat the inside of these uh, old model uh, plastic tanks out, eat the eat the Palmer out of them. You mm -hmm. see, so so it's all uh, it's uh, it, it 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 don't cause any problems as long as you keep good good uh, hoses and fresh fuel in it. You see. Right. Yeah. But you start letting it sit, and we've had here in the last uh, month or two, we've had. Uh, very harsh environment, you know, as far as the temperature where everybody's sitting still, you see. Right, right. And, and, and you know, well, a lot of people don't have uh, uh, access to keep their boat in, either in a garage or a basement or what have you. It's sitting outside and on the carport mm -hmm. and uh, or under a, a boat cover. And, you know, it gets really cold. When it's, when it's, the, the when it's zero outside, out, it's zero in there. It's and, the, so, uh, yeah, they, they could get a lot of condensation in the gas. Willie, anything else you got? No, I believe that'll do it. All right, man. We're glad to hear from you. Have a good, have a good, good night. Talk to y'all. All right, buddy. See you. All right. Bye. -bye. All right, bud. Okay. Uh, you know that sloshing around uh, that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, like you say, when you're storing your boat at the marina, you go jump in it. And anything in the bottom of the tank, that's where that pickup's at, and that's it sure, where it, it sure does. It's got and it. Fuel, ethanol will separate. You can set it mm -hmm. out on a on a glass jar and see it separate. Right. You see, but a bass boat guy has an advantage, you know, because he <laughs> usually goes down the road of stopping yeah. and starting and turning curves, and <laughs> and so time he yeah. gets there, he's usually right. especially if he's late, it's pretty well uh, it's lost, uh, mixed pretty, back pretty, up. Mixed back up. Yeah. Says, that's a plus. You see. Okay. That's uh. Uh, that, that, that sounds good. I, I tell you what, I'm going to start right now putting me a little bit of oil in my gas tank. Well, we've had some some mercury uh, injectors that do what we call galled up, and you can mm -hmm. do it with them, and uh, some of them are very expensive. Right. Now, and uh, we were synthetic. We like the clot synthetic. Mm -hmm. We like mm -hmm. we like the synthetic. Yeah, it just, uh, we've raced it and run it all kind of conditions, and, uh, and we'll just put a little bit of that synthetic in there, and it'll, it'll do wonders. That, that sounds good. Uh, uh, I'm gonna tell you, I've been burning. I burn. I use the mercury oil. Mercury oil is good. We but, we but, sell it. We sell it uh, all three time. brand, three yeah. different types. We have the DFI oil for the. We have the premium plus. Uh, right. now, we don't we don't keep the premium. That's a low price stuff. Yeah. Like some discounters do. We. Uh, premium plus. Premium, okay. Pre premium plus and the DFI right. for the Optimax. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then we have the Clots 100% synthetic. Hey. It's a. So we have three different types of oil coming in. And then we have the Yamalu too, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. both the 2M and the 4M. So we have a good good selection, good selection of oil down mm -hmm. there. Well, and Glenn, you, uh, you know, I know the racing part of what you do, uh, you probably use clots all the time. Yeah, we uh, mix it. I raced it at 64 to 1, mm -hmm. at way over 10,000 RPM. Mm -hmm. And uh, no lubrication problem. Now, you can over-lubricate an engine. You can be, you could actually get... Mm -hmm. Directly too good oil or too much oil. Mm. Contrary to popular belief, uh, an engine running 25 to 1 will do damage, and where an engine run 50 to 60 to 1 will not do damage. Yeah. Mm. Correct RPM is very important. It's called wide open throttle. Yeah. Be sure that engine is running at the top, especially a four stroke is very uh, uh, susceptible to damage if you run too low RPM. You can't hardly, the new motors, you can't hardly over rib them because they've got a uh, rib limiter built in the ECM. Yes. You see. Right, yeah. But lugging lugging an engine, uh, I've seen some very uh, bad damage to for an engine that was running low RPM. Mm -hmm. Consumer don't understand that because he drives his car down the road in a ease down there to two to 3,000 RPM engine, uh, RPM range, mm -hmm. for that the, the boat motor, you, you got you got to turn it up we we'll call it wide open throttle. Mm -hmm. And if you're light loaded, you need to be at the top of the range. Right. I think your engine is 
is uh, your engine is uh, likes about six thousand. Uh, 5900 mm -hmm. it'll turn a little more but that's what it likes you see yeah that's yeah it's not it's not loaded heavy under a strain yes. it's kind of freed up and just coasting really. well an engine has a color map sensor mm -hmm. that uh it's a vacuum deal and if you got a lot of a lot of uh, low rpm it uh, it really runs a mixture rich and believe it or not i've done some flow bench test i mean flow testing mm -hmm. rpm run don't really matter i mean it matters but it, it's uh, the 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 load at the engine on determines the fuel consumption. Mm -hmm. I would have never thought that. that, that you could turn more RPM to use less fuel. fuel. Uh, that, yeah, I <laughs> because it, the, the map sensor leans down the mixture and makes it run a uh, little low. Of course, the new automaxes are getting tremendous mileage. I, yeah. guess, you, I guess you've experienced it's that. that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm well pleased with mine. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, and, and I know the newer ones are, are, are better probably than the one I've got. But Yours uh, are what, 07, isn't it? No, it's 08. 08. Well, they, they haven't done a whole lot. Right. They've done some uh, mm -hmm. some uh, recalibration of ECMs in the last little bit, but it's basically the same engine with a few improvements. You know. Right. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, and it doesn't use a lot of oil, and I'm using the Premium Plus. Well, that's a good. That's a good. And, that's a good. And, uh, that's a good. That's uh, and it's uh, but that's a uh, you know, heck, it's. Uh, it, 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 I can't complain about the engine at all. I mean, I knock on wood. It's been a great engine. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, it, you know, the, all those things, uh, that the oil and, and the, that you're using and, and, and keeping the gas stirred up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, when you let a boat set, uh, it, expect to have, I, you know, I'm, years ago, uh, uh, we'd go to these tournaments. The first tournament of the year I seemed like there's always two or three people blew an engine. Well, what happens, uh, carburetors will stop up. Mm -hmm. You've got sometimes three or four carburetors. Yep. One will stop up. The other others are still running halfway decent. Then that one stopped up uh, starves the engine for fuel. Yep. And, and it, But the same thing happens on these injectors. Yeah. If one injector is not flowing, it stopped up similar to what I showed you on the flow flow chart there. Mm -hmm. Then somebody one cylinder is getting starved. You see. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got major expense of uh, of pistons and sleeves and door yep. jobs and all that kind of stuff. Boy, I tell you what, that uh, man, I don't even want to think about the expense of it. Uh, those things are expensive to repair mm -hmm. and to fix. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, uh, we're a little simple uh, cleaning job. Uh, you know, it's like putting grease in a bearing. You know, if you if you don't take care of those uh, hub bearings on your trailer, eventually you're going to be down on the side of the road. Yes. And, and uh, you run a spindle, and you got all that expense where the grease is a cheap thing to, to uh, take care of that with. Same with with uh, cleaning these injectors when they're not uh, opening up correctly. So yes. Uh, 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 you know, we're going to try to nip it in the bud and and, and cure the problem before it happens. We're making some good inroads now in, in hub systems. Mm -hmm. Express has something called a Vortex system. Mm -hmm. It's guaranteed for, I believe, 100,000 miles. Oh, man. Uh, since they went to them, I've not had any 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 unhappy customers. Right. Now, a fisherman is sort of tough on bearings. He goes down the road, he heats <laughs> them up, right? Yeah, and then dunks them. <laughs> Dumps them in the water. Yep. Somebody's got a fish in line that they have. Uh, yeah. That they have left on the on, on the on ramp. boat ramp. Yes, sir. Here it goes around there. You mm. get the seal, and then the bearings are all rusty, and he's he's not too happy. Right. He's sitting on the side of the road. But it's called a Vortex High Performance Hub System. Hmm. And it's uh, they got a big old ring. It's all sealed. Right. It's got a stainless steel band around the axle, where the seal runs. And so far, it's solved. Uh, and of course, all companies are beginning to make inroads in better product parts of bearings. You see, mm -hmm. you know, they, right. they, uh, uh, so uh, but that just that that has really helped my my customer relations as far as with uh, with the new system. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a, that's a bad thing. A guy that's got a boat and he runs off the lake and, and uh, wheel bearing wheel right. bearing goes down. Man, I tell you, he's what, not unhappy. He, he's, he's unhappy he, customer. He's an unhappy customer. Yeah, yeah he sure is. Clean. Is those hubs oil filled, Glenn? Is that they're, no, they're grease filled. They were grease filled. Okay. But they, now they do make an oil field. You know, some of my some of my brands has an oil filled hub. Uh, okay. 
Okay. But this is a grease field, but it has a big old ring on the outside. Uh, okay. Yeah. Not a seal like we're used to seeing the no. old. Uh, uh, Burning buddies. It, 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 it's, it's, kind, a, it's, yeah. all, it's all. It's all. It's all a big, uh, a big ring. seal, big yeah. old ring, all sealed. Mm. And so far, like I said, they've been mm -hmm. about three or four years. They've been using this product. Right. And no, no failures I've heard of. Mm. Well, you know, on the older hubs, you know, the the grease was actually to keep the water. It, uh, well, that was the only thing there to keep the water out. If it was, uh, so, if it's full of grease and the water get in, yeah, right? it sling it out yeah. on the hood, go down the road. I mean, out on the tarp. But right. I guess you've seen that, right? Yes, sir. Sure have. And uh, so we're we're making. I mean, it, products are beginning to, almost every year. We have an improvement. You see. Right. There but, you uh, go. But I've got some good brands down there. I've got. Uh, just come on down and sit down, and they, of course everybody has a different need. You know, different. You know, what mm -hmm. does he right. what does he need or want? And we can sit down with him and have a little one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, interview, I guess, and try to figure out what the customer's looking for. All right. Folks, you've heard that from the man himself. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're interested in, in a boat, uh, one of the brands Glenn's got, and, or he can help you in, with service on your engine or whatever it might be. And we don't care where you bought it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I got you. Uh, uh, you, and, and he's, you know, the guy, the only dealer around that, that does this injector cleaning. As far as I, I know, know, I mean, I don't know of any of that. Uh, uh, that uh, yeah. But yeah. I don't see how I got along at it without it before. Well. I mean, I've got so many case histories here, here of, of the before and after. Right. And, uh, you know, there's a, you know, there's a 225X that picked up from 50 to 100 uh CCs in, in the flow in the flow time. Right. Now there is a, a seventy horse Suzuki, you know, that mm -hmm. went from sixty to ninety two, and I went from thirty to ninety. 90 it, yeah. It, it picked up uh, three times the flow. Well, but see. when they got through, they's all ninety, 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 mm -hmm. and ninety two. Yeah. So they they really so it's it's not one brand. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all the way across. Well, the, and uh, here is a anything using those uh, injectors. Now here is a motor like you got, Jeff mm -hmm. Knight had a 225 XS, mm -hmm. and he had one that's flown 32 uh, cc's or milliliters, and he went to 96, and we got through, and they're pretty well plus or minus two or three, three liters. Yeah, I see that. So that's, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, there is a Merc Cruiser, which is, uh, and it wasn't too bad. It had, uh, that, that's one of the, has to be one that wasn't too but when we got through, it's all right at 100%. 100%, yeah. Uh, same, same, same pressure, mm -hmm. same number of seconds, and the milliliters or CCs. It, it, so that they were that's an eight-cylinder, so they were pretty close. Right. Yeah. But the but the uh, so there is a good spectrum of products from Suzuki's to uh, to uh, the, the 225X two-stroke to the Optimaxes. Yeah. And the and the inboard all all had about the same problems. Right. You see. All right. Folks, uh, you know, I've got a couple of minutes here to uh, uh, announce a few things, and, and I want to thank Glenn for coming over, and I hope uh, their phones are still on. And, and uh, But even at that, if you don't get in here tonight, uh, call him down to his business tomorrow. And I'm sure he'll be more than glad to uh, help you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So uh, he's got a lot of knowledge about setup on boats and, and, and this kind of thing, so, uh, you know. We've got a lot of new product too. Got a lot of new products coming in. Uh, Already there. So uh, just uh, you know, give him a call and, and or go down and see him. You know, he's just right there in Harriman. It's not that far away from our viewing area. Uh, right in the middle of everything. So drive by and look look at some of the boats he's got down there. And and, and if you got something you need, why get with him. Uh, photo of the month. Have not received one. As of tonight, uh, a guy showed me some photos yesterday on his phone, uh, and I said, "Well, you know, I've seen them, but you got to send them to me." So he didn't—he hadn't sent them yet. So I'm hoping he'll get those in to me tomorrow for sure. Uh, he had some nice bass uh, that he caught on Norse Lake. So uh, uh, do do remember the photo of the month to get you a Let's Go Fishing shirt, and then. Uh, uh, a couple of other announcements. We've got some tournaments coming up here. Uh, the Heartland Anglers kicks theirs off. I was at the uh, fishing show uh, Saturday afternoon, picked up a bunch of flyers over there from 
some tournaments that's going to start off here in February, I see March. Uh, a couple of them was going to start in February uh, and that kind of thing. Most of them started up in March, the spring uh, uh, flood of tournaments and that kind of thing. So uh, uh, I know it's cold. Uh, I have got a little bit of fishing film. I'm not going to show it. Uh, I've, Glenn's been with me and, and uh, so uh, that's fine. We. I was hoping we'd take up the whole show. I'll save that film because if it's what cold weather stays like it is, Glenn, I might not get to go for a day or two. Might not get to go feed. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's part of it. You said that's you know that's uh, that's it. You you know. So uh, I'll save that little bit of film for next week, and and if everything works out, uh, may get to go. So uh, Sunday's supposed to be nearly. Sunday's 50. about fifty. I can stand that. Now I, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, this uh, in the teens is is a little different. It's a little different than that 50 degree. Uh, so we're going to hold that little bit of film. And uh, like I say, we might have to show it next week. Uh, caught the fish on a jerk bait. You guys that like to fish a jerk bait, I brought one of my favorites in here. And I'm going to have a tank of water set up here. And I'm going to show you my tips about tricks about how to, to weight these things down. Because you can buy five of them, throw them in a tub of water, and they'll one may sink, one the other four float, and then so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, that's what I say. Don't test them before you go to the lake with them and uh, uh, that kind of thing. So, uh, Brad, how much time we got? Two minutes. Two minutes, okay. So uh, uh, my plan was to bring some water over and, uh, and some more jerk baits and, and we kind of set it up here and, and you, you know, I want to throw one in and all that kind of stuff. So we'll get into that jerk bait fishing uh, because uh, the fish I caught down there Sunday afternoon on Watts Bar, uh, three of them came on a jerk bait, and uh, uh, I, you know, I like to throw it. That's good. Uh, I, I like to throw it, and uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, you, you know. So so anyway, we'll get into how I do it, and you know, everybody's got their clean. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Everybody's got their own little, got their own, own little, niche, right? Own niche. That's exactly right. It, it, you know, they may do it a different way and, and uh, than what I do, but I'm going to try to show that next week. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, the photo of the month and the jerk bait fishing and the film next week, we'll show some, uh, hopefully have uh, the film that I didn't show tonight. We'll show it next week if I don't get to go get some more. I hope I do. Uh, I got a friend of mine that loves to float and fly fish, and I may uh, get hooked up with him Sunday, and, and if I do, uh, uh, I'm going to film him floating and fly fishing. Uh, I, I don't do it much. you got your helmet cam. Yeah, I've got my helmet cam, yes, sir, Glenn, I sure do, and, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be using that, I guarantee you. So, folks, uh, hope you enjoyed the show, and I was very glad to have Glenn over here with me. And don't forget to give him a call. And God bless, and we'll see you next week.